Senator, let me turn the page and just ask you about, I'm sure you've seen our new CNN poll out today. It shows yeah. you and former Vice President Joe Biden as the front runners in this, this current race. And my question to you is, will your campaign be more about the contrast that you've clearly been drawing with Biden, or will it be more focused on who can best defeat President Trump? Well, I think both, to be honest with you. Look, uh, in my view, uh, Donald Trump is the most dangerous president in the modern history of this country. He's a pathological liar. He's a racist, a sexist, a homophobe, a xenophobe. This is somebody who should not be president. I will do everything I can if I'm the Democratic nominee to defeat him, and I will support if I lose somebody else, whether it's Joe, whether it's somebody else. We're going to defeat uh, Donald Trump. But on the other hand, I think what I want to see in the Democratic primary is not you know, personal attacks or all, any of that stuff. What I want to see is an issue-oriented campaign. And Joe and I have very different pasts in terms of how we have voted and very different vision for the future. And that is something that we should be discussing. For example, all right, I voted against the war in Iraq. In fact, helped lead the opposition to what turned out to be the worst foreign policy disaster in the modern history of America. Joe voted for it. I voted against a NAFTA. Uh, I voted against permanent normal trade relations with China, two trade agreements which cost us millions of good paying jobs. Joe supported those agreements. I voted against the deregulation of Wall Street. Uh, Joe supported that legislation, which I think, you know, many people agree with me, some don't, led to the Wall Street collapse of 2008. Senator, um, let me jump in because I, I hear you on the, on the contrast, and there are a number of them, but the one thing that both of you voted for and what, what Joe Biden helped write is the 1994 crime bill. Uh, even former President Bill Clinton, who signed it into law, says it went too far, right? It, it expanded right. mandatory minimums. It boosted the right, nation's right. prison Absolutely. population. It, it disproportionately impacted African Americans yes. and Hispanics. So my yes. question to you, Senator Sanders, is do you regret that well, vote? Let me give you my answer. Go to YouTube today and find out what I said literally Well, I'm on looking the day at you right now, Senator. It. Tell me but, if you but regret One second. It. I voted for that bill because it included the Violence Against Women's Act and it included a ban on assault weapons. And Brooke, you would be asking me today, Senator, why did you not vote for a ban on assault weapons? Why did you vote against? I'm asking you the, today uh, if you regret your vote. What I, sometimes you have legislation which includes very good stuff and very bad stuff. That legislation included very bad stuff. I had to make the choice whether I voted to ban assault weapons, something that I promised the people of Vermont I would, and I also had to vote to make sure that we had a violence against women provision in there. If you see what I said on the floor at that time, I talked about mass incarceration. I talked about capital punishment. So sometimes in the real world, in the Congress, you got big pieces of legislation that are bad stuff, and God knows that legislation had bad stuff. And right now I'm one of the leaders in the fight for criminal justice reform, so we don't have more people in jail than any other major country on earth. Check Speaking my record of jail. Out. Speaking of jail, speaking of incarceration, I read your opinion piece. I mean, today yes. you wrote this opinion piece, USA Today, everyone can go read it, uh, on why you think felons deserve the right to vote. And you point out in the middle part of the piece that, that over 4.5 million Americans, disproportionately people of color, have lost their right to vote because they've served time. And, and so, Senator, on this, on this issue, only 28% of Democrats or Democratic leaners say that this is very important to them, uh, that the candidate that they support take this position. And I just wanted to ask you, why is this so important well, to you I, and your campaign? Well, Brooke, I think you know how politics works. I was asked that as, in a question. In fact, I didn't come up with it. It was asked the question, I gave an answer. And I think we should do what Canada does, what Israel does, what many countries around the world do. And that is to separate. If somebody commits a serious crime, they're going to go to jail. And if they're violent people, they may spend the rest of their lives in jail. That's the way it is. You pay a price when you commit a crime. But this is what I believe. At a time when the Republican Party and Donald Trump are working overtime to suppress the vote, to make it harder for people of color, poor people, young people to vote, we have got to make it clear, in my view, that if you are an American citizen, even if you do something terrible, even if you're a bad person, we cannot take away your right to vote, whether you're in jail or whether you left jail. Clearly, what Republicans are doing is trying to deny people of color the right to vote and this is an issue I think we have to address head on. So even if you are in jail, even in Democrats my view, disagree with you. I mean, you I'm well, sure fine. saw what Look, Cory Booker said. Things, yeah, but let me say this, Brooke. Four years ago, people disagreed with me on Medicare for all, raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour. 
criminal justice reform, spending a trillion dollars on rebuilding our infrastructure. People disagreed with me. They'll disagree with me now. But you know what? I will tell you what I think, and that is if you're a citizen of this country, you have the right to vote. And I will oppose all efforts to try to deny Americans the right to participate in our democracy. Okay. Um, last week, you were at She the People, and you were asked what you would do to fight white supremacist violence as president. And, and during your response, you were booed. Uh, and part of the criticism, criticism well, that was that you, you didn't answer the question, and you gave an answer that many had heard before about marching with Dr. King in, in Washington. And would you like to respond to that criticism and Well, look, I, if you check out, yeah, I got booed. Some people booed me. But I think if you listen to the response that I got when I walked on and walked off, it was a fairly strong response. And my view is, obviously, uh, that we have got to do everything that we can uh, to make sure that we end the racism, institutional racism that exists in every form of life. Women today who are black experience two and a half times the rate of infant mortality uh, than white women do. Uh, we have redlining that continues to exist in communities all over this country. Uh, blacks get rejected. Blacks who have the uh, same kind of background as whites get rejected from job applications more. That's called institutional racism. And there's nobody who's going to be stronger uh, in opposing that. So we have got to move toward a country that, as Dr. King mentioned, we judge people on their character, who they are, and not by the color of their skin. Senator Bernie Sanders, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you.